hello everybody welcome back to another video on the channel today i would like to show you guys five autocad dimensioning tips that i think will be helpful for you especially if you are doing a lot of documentation and you are required to use a lot of dimensioning and stuff like that and so some of the tips that i will show you today will help you to move a little bit faster I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with some of the tricks that I'm going to be showing you here. They're not even tricks, but uh, just ways of doing things. But there may be others that you are not yet familiar with. Definitely stick around to the end of the video because there's one particular tool that is very unique. And I would like to show you guys what that is all about. So without further ado, remember to subscribe, like, and the notification and all of that. Instagram, Twitter, boom, bang, Patreon. Let's go. All right, everybody. So here we are in AutoCAD Architecture 2023. And of course, I know many of you don't have the 2023 as yet, but don't worry. All the commands and uh, steps that I'm going to show you in this video can be applied to your version. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. And so uh, no need to worry. No need to fret. Um, of course, the interface that I'm using might look a little bit different. Plus, I'm also using Windows 11, so things might look a little different, but it should be the same thing once you follow the steps. All right. Now, before I jump into the first tip that I have for you, I want to mention that I do have a three part video on annotations and dimensions in general, how you should scale them properly, how you get them to look pretty on your sheets. And so if that is something you're interested in and you haven't seen those videos as yet i'm going to be posting them in the description below so at the end of this video i encourage you to go ahead and check those out there are some pretty good gems over there so i'm pretty sure you're going to learn something also i'll be using this little model here for today's presentation and of course if you want to download this particular project i have dropped it over on patreon so you can check that out i have also posted additional models like this one over there plus some other stuff so if you're interested in that then check that out all right so with that all out of the way let's jump into the first tip that i have for you so the first tip i'm going to talk about here which is probably the most important one when adding dimensions and i'm sure many of you would have known about this one already which is to create a dedicated layer for your dimensions. That's like standard now. So if I go to home, you can see that my current layer right now is the zero layer. You don't ever want to add dimensions to your zero layer, okay? What we need to do is to go to our layer properties and we need to create a layer for dimensions, okay? Now, there are many ways we can do this, but I'm going to be showing you the easiest method. So what we're going to do is type the command dim layer. Now, as you can see here, it uh, pops up here. I'm going to click on it. As you can see in the brackets here, it says dimensions are being added to the current layer. So anything that you have current is what your dimensions will be added to. But if we type a new name in this command line, then a new layer will be created for all our dimensions. So let's go ahead and type G dash anno dash dims. Now, before I press enter, if you had created a layer before and you want to use that layer, then you would type the name of that layer in here. Okay, so let's hit enter. And what that does is to create a new layer in here for us that is called, where is it? Okay, so we're not seeing it as yet and I know why. I think it's because we have not added a dimension as yet. So let's go ahead and click on this guy here and I'm gonna add a dimension from here to here and I'm gonna pull it out, click. And if I highlight this dimension, you can see that it is now using the G and dims layer, which is the one that we've just created. So let's go back to our layer properties and now it should be available. Here we go. All right. And what I want to do here is to change the color from white to maybe this guy here. I'm going to hit OK. And the second thing I'm going to do is to change the line weight from 
what it is to just maybe about 0.18 and that's that. So now I have a layer dedicated for dimensions. And if you notice when I deselect off of the dimension, it switches back to the default layer. However, when I need to add a dimension, it will always be added to my new layer. So let's add another one and see if that actually works. And as you can see, it works. All right. So that's the first important step you need to take. Now, if you're using the regular AutoCAD, the that the one that is not the architecture version, if you go over to annotate, you will see a drop down that does the same thing. OK, so if you click on that drop down, I can pretty much select any of the layers that I would like to make my default dimension layer. So as you can see there, it has already been selected. Now, the reason you're seeing this drop down in my architecture version is because I went in and I finesse around with the user interface and got it in here because I'm like, why wasn't it in here in the first place? But um, for some reason, the architectural version of AutoCAD does not have it there. So I had to uh, add it in here. All right. If you want me to do a video on that, uh, definitely drop your comments, you know, drop a like, let me know if you want me to show you guys how to modify your user interface. All right. So let's jump into the second tip that I have for you. And that is right in front of your face. If you haven't seen it as yet, uh, you're going to learn about it today. All right. So when you highlight a dimension, you hover over each uh, end point here and you get some options. All right. And so I'm going to be going through what all of these options do. And so let's click on the first one, which is a stretch command. And what that does is pretty straightforward. You can use it to move your uh, dimension in either direction. And that is pretty similar to uh, just as clicking on the end point there and move it. So that's nothing new. But one of the other one that is very useful would be the second option. So in a case like this, where we have a lot of dimensions already added and we want to move them all at the same time, uh, we can use the stretch dimension group. OK, and what that does is allow us to move all of our strings of dimensions together. OK, and this is very helpful because I remember when I had to move all of these one by one or two by two, and it was a pain. OK, so this is really helpful to stretch all of your dimensions at once. And then we have the third one, which is the continue dimension, which is very similar to this button right here. It's actually the same thing. Um, and also, if you right click, you normally would have the continue option here. But I don't use those options anymore because I have it right here. And so if I wanted to add some extra dimensions to capture this uh, column right here, what I would do is to hover over that end point in the direction that I want to go. And I would say continue. And now I can add some extra dimensions here and here just like that. I can do the same thing with this one here, continue, and I'll add another one here. OK, and just to top things off, I'm going to just grab this one here and I'm going to just drag it up and move it up just to make the overall distance um, make more sense. All right. So that's another neat trick right there that we can use to just continue dimensions. All right. Now we have the baseline dimension, which I think would be helpful if we were to do this on an elevation view. OK, so here is an elevation view of the same building that we are looking at. And so the baseline dimension comes in really helpful uh, if you were to have a dimension that is coming off of a baseline. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to be adding the first dimension here, which would be, you know, the first dimension. And so if I want to continue off of this baseline here, I would hover over this point and I would say baseline dimension. And what it does is to pull all of my other dimensions off of one baseline. So I can use this to capture the height of my window, uh, the height of this roof here, maybe the height of that, the height of that, and the height of that, and the height of that. 
And so if you notice, all of these dimensions are being pulled from a single base line. All right, so I'm pretty sure there are some uh, instances where you might want to do something like this. And so that's what that does. Let's move to the next one. Now the flip arrow is pretty simple. What it does is to flip your arrows. If you are not comfortable or if you don't like the way your arrows are looking, you can just flip it like that and you can flip it back. This works better if your arrows were like the literal arrows. All right, so in this case, it makes more sense. Um, so in, there are gonna be times uh, when you need to flip your arrow head to look like that. Um, and so that's what the purpose of that is for. Cool. So that concludes our second tip, which is all of these function within the dropdown here. So the third trick that I have for you is related to spacing. Now, as you can see here, uh, my dimensions are not equally spaced out. And so what we want to do usually to make our drawings neat and nice and professional is to make sure that all of our dimensions are equally spaced. How do we get that done without doing a lot of work? What we can do is to go back to our annotate tab and underneath your dimensions drop down, you will see something called dimension spacing. And so if we click on that and follow the command prompts here, it says here, select your base dimension. And so you want to select uh, the one that is the base. Okay. And so of course your innermost dimension would be the base. And so you click on one of those and um, it says here, select the dimensions that you want to be spaced out. And so of course it would be all of these other ones here. And if you notice, I did not select these ones here because those are already good. And then we would hit enter and we just need to give it a distance. And if you want to use the auto, you can, but I would prefer to type something in here. So I am going to type maybe 12 inches. I don't know. Boom. And just like that, it equals out the distances between all of my dimensions. And so I can see this being very helpful if you had a lot of other dimensions to add uh, to your drawing. So you don't necessarily have to focus on neatness uh, because you can just use a command to get it in the end. So there you have it. The next command that I'll be moving on to is what we called dim break. Okay. And so on my dimensions, panel here, I do have the icon. Now, this is one of those other icons that I had to add into my architectural AutoCAD because it wasn't there before. Um, again, you can just type the command that you see there, dim break, and it would work just as, you know, just as good. Um, but I like to have the icon so I can actually click on it. So how does this work? So this works well where you have uh, internal dimensions that are crossing each other and you would like to have a little break in the dimension line so that it doesn't obstruct each other. And so how do we do that? Uh, what we do is to click on the command or type the command in the command line and it would says select dimension to add or remove break. And so we can select multiple or in this case, I just have one. So I'm going to select this one here. And then I'm going to select the object to break. And so I'm going to select this guy here and I'm going to hit enter. And just like that, you can see that a break has been made in the dimension. And the cool thing is that this is smart. Okay. Smart in the fact that if I should move this up or down anywhere along this dimension, it would actually create uh, that break in that line. And so that's how this works, All right? Pretty cool. The next one I want to show you guys, which is pretty cool as well, is how to get a fixed extension lines. So these lines that are running towards the building or towards the object, we call these extension lines. Uh, but what if we want them all to be short? <laughs> we want them to be at a fixed distance. Unlike we're seeing here where this one is long and then this one is short and then you have a little bit longer and you know, you have some shorter ones here. And so what we can do here is to modify the dimension properties. So let's go over to 
home let's go to annotate and let's click on this icon right here dimension style and this particular dimension we're going to modify and then we are going to go over to lines right down here we can see where it says fix length extension lines and so if we click on this guy here and we put something in here i don't know what one looks like but i'm going to put point two five okay close all right so there we have it i think that looks nicer and so a lot of folks like to have their dimensions looking like this uh, which is fine and then we can stretch them out some more and it would look just the same as they were because all your extension lines are the same length and the final tip i have for you is related to uh, this command right here and again this is one of those dimension tools that i added to my panel here because it wasn't there before um, so if you don't see it you can just type the three letter dim as you can see right there and it would work just the same. So what this tool does is it is like a hybrid of all the other tools combined. And so if you learn to use it really well, uh, it can be your one-stop shop for everything. And so when you click on it here, you, you pretty much have angular dimensions. You, you have also uh, linear dimensions if you want linear. Um, you have, I mean, if I escape out of this and I go again, I can go angular right from the get go. I can, you know, do baseline right from the get go. And so you do have a lot of uh, uh, options when using this tool. So I'm going to go through a couple of the uh, cool tricks that this one has. Let us say I would like to add the width of this window in this uh, six foot measurement here. And I go ahead and I add this guy right in and I move it up and I stop it right on top of that one. Right away, it tells me that something is overlapping and I can break the existing dimension to make it fit perfectly. And so that's what I'm going to do. So if I say break, as a matter of fact, we have another option that says move away. So we can move our second dimension away or we can break it. So I'm going to choose the break option. And what that does is to break the six foot dimension into other dimensions. And so now you can see that works perfectly um, and that only works with this tool okay so there are some really cool features when using that so i would encourage you to go ahead and test these out and see if they work within your workflow and you know make use of them yeah definitely okay so that's where we're gonna stop this video for today and uh, guess what if you are even looking for a faster way to add dimensions to your drawing i have a video that shows you how to do that with one or maybe two clicks uh, adding a lot of dimensions really fast and so i'm gonna be dropping that video right up there so definitely check that out when you get the chance and uh, yeah thank you for watching and if you learned something hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already uh, hit the like button and drop your comments and your thoughts in the comment section below big up to the patrons on my patreon page appreciate you all see you guys in the next video